This weekend we celebrate the great and beautiful feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist. Holy Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Veronica Webster. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for you. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you for 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you and know your inmost heart. Whether you would keep his commandments or not, he humbled you. He made you feel hunger. He fed you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known. 
to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not then forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions and thirst, who in this waterless place brought you water from the hardest rock, who in this wilderness fed you with manna that your fathers had not known. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ, and the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that, though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. 
Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father. So whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven. Not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, this beautiful feast of today, Corpus Christi, came about as the result of a miracle. A monk, Peter of Prague, in the 13th century, was on pilgrimage to Rome. He stopped off to celebrate Mass at Lake Bolzena, just north of Rome. And he was having big doubts about the miracle of transubstantiation. And at the moment of the elevation of the host, blood ran down from the host, falling down upon the altar cloth. That cloth is now preserved. It's in the cathedral in Orvieto in Italy. And when the Pope, Urban IV, heard about this phenomenon, he was so impressed that it was a miracle that he decided to make a special feast to celebrate the abiding presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Now, we recall this obviously every year on Maundy Thursday, but with this feast today, we have the opportunity to give this mystery of faith much more prominence, solemnity, and celebration. Now, the Catholic Church in her dogma called transubstantiation in the Catechism explains, by the consecration of the bread and the wine, there takes place a change of the whole substance of the bread into the substance of the body of Christ our Lord and of the whole substance of the wine into the substance of his blood. This means that while the appearance of the bread and the wine remain, the substance is changed through the power of God completely into the body and blood of Christ. Now this is a teaching based on the scriptures and tradition, and it has remained the unchanged teaching of the church since apostolic times. However, the church has recognized that on occasions, God intervenes in a more visible way and can change even the appearance of bread and wine into his body and blood. Or God may miraculously preserve a consecrated host for an extended amount of time, well beyond what is the natural life of a piece of unleavened bread. Now, even though the church does not base her teaching on these miracles, but on Christ's word, when God chooses to do such miracles, there is usually a great flowering of belief in the Eucharistic presence of Jesus Christ. The scriptures, the Bible says, that the hand of God is never shortened, and he continues to manifest himself in unexpected ways, even in the rationalist and relativistic times in which we find ourselves. Now, the most recent of these Eucharistic miracles or phenomena took place in Legnitschka, Poland, on Christmas Day, 2013, just 10 years ago. During the distribution of Holy Communion, a consecrated host fell to the floor and then was picked up by the priest and placed in a water-filled vessel 
in the sacristy. Soon afterwards, stains of red colour appeared. The Bishop of Lednitska ordered an investigation, a commission to observe this phenomenon. And in February 2014, a tiny fragment of the host was separated and placed onto a corporal, that cloth that's on the altar during Mass. The commission ordered to take samples in order to conduct a thorough research by tests relevant to the particular institutes. After some investigation, the Department of Forensic Medicine stated that in the fragments of the tissue, there was found what is similar to heart muscle, with alterations that often occur as a result of a trauma. The genetic research indicated the human origin of that tissue. So here we can say we have what could be described as a miracle within a miracle. The host turns to flesh, to heart tissue, and the tissue is found to have a similar effect to an organ that's been through some intense trauma, like the passion of Jesus. If all this sounds miraculous, it is. But God doesn't just want to work on the faith of doubting priests in Italy in the 13th century. He wants to work miracles in our own time too. But he does this most often imperceptibly, invisibly, without us even noticing. You know, often the greatest, the most wonderful, the beautiful things of life, we pass them by without even noticing them, without giving them a second thought. Coming to Mass, week in and week out, we may not feel much better, much holier, or more committed to Christ. But we can't come to Mass each week and not be changed. Blessed Carlo Acutis said, just standing before the Blessed Sacrament makes us holy. You know, it's like being in the presence of a great force. Again, Blessed Carlo says, if we go out into the sun, we get a suntan. But when we go in front of Jesus in the Eucharist, we become saints. Having Christ within us, in the Mass, in Holy Communion, is just like that. The Eucharistic presence of Jesus is one, if not the greatest, joy of our Catholic faith. It's why we come here and we don't go to some other church. We come here because we've got the Eucharist. It's also one of the most logical things that God has done, you know, because if God has made himself into a tiny child in the person of Jesus at Christmas, then there's nothing to prevent him and nothing has prevented him for making himself as food, the bread and the wine that become his body and blood. It is the sign of contradiction now, as it was when it was first taught by Jesus to the Jews in the synagogue of Capernaum. We've just heard his words in the Gospel. And as St. Augustine once sagely remarked, for those who believe, no explanation is necessary. For those who do not believe, no explanation is possible. It's always by faith that we meet and recognize Jesus in this sacrament. And today's feast provides the opportunity for us to offer thanksgiving for so great a gift and mystery. We thank Mary for her part in this mystery of our faith. Her yes at the Annunciation made it possible as she was the first tabernacle on this earth of God's presence. So she will also lead us to Jesus constantly. Jesus sacrificed, broken, and given for the life of the world. Praise be Jesus Christ.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With joy on this feast, we bring our prayers before God in the name of the Lord Jesus, who is our bread of life. For those in our community who suffer through bereavement, may God, who is kind and full of compassion, bring them his consolation. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. For all those in our community who feel distant from God, May they hear afresh the good news that God is close to us and discover the joy of his presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. For peace in our world at this time, that the suffering people of Ukraine may be given fortitude and their aggressors receive the grace of conversion. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. We pray for those who have died recently. John Cooper, Caroline Geegan, and Rachel Phillips. We pray also for the dead whose anniversaries occur about this time. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Let us ask the mother of our saviour to add her prayers to ours. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, Amen. in our life, our sweetness, and our hope, to thee do we cry for those children of Eve, Amen. to thee do we send us our stars, mourning and weeping in this vein of tears, to our men, most gracious advocate, by the eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show me to us the blessed fruit of our Lord Jesus. In the quiet of our hearts, we bring any special prayers before God. Father, as we rejoice in the mystery of Christ present in our midst, we ask you to hear the prayers we make with all our hearts through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for at the last supper with his apostles establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the altar of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing the new song of adoration, as with all the hosts of angels we cry out, and without end, we acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Would you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope and Adam, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or the offering for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate especially, the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs. Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Clatus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Amy, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace. And command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until we come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetio, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. each other a sign of peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have a mercy Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of the God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. So this afternoon we have our Eucharistic procession beginning at four o'clock in the church. It's the annual opportunity we have as Catholics to make a public statement of our faith to show a small portion of the world outside that we believe in this mystery of Christ present in the Eucharist, the greatest of all the mysteries of our faith. So hopefully we'll all be able to come back this afternoon to participate in this short procession, accompanied by the Tilbury Brouse Band and led by our First Communion children, and then concluding with the tea next door in the parish centre. It's four o'clock here this afternoon. This coming Friday is the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. There are two Masses on Friday, 9am and 12 noon. And following the Midday Mass, there'll be some short devotions and benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. And this weekend, there's the annual retiring collection for the sick and retired clergy fund of our diocese. You can either contribute to this by using the second collection envelopes, by using the online donation scheme, or using the contactless device at the back of the church. Just remember, it's my future you're funding. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.